I have been reading comments and some of you are telling me that why you keep on bragging about what Africans are doing. I'm not just bragging, but I'm appreciating brothers who think that Africa is home and it's time for us to come together, both Africans on the continent and Africans in the diaspora to join hands together to build our beloved motherland. I feel so proud about them. That's why I decided to share episodes on why I left America, UK, Australia, Netherlands. I mean, I left the entire diaspora to come build something to change things in the motherland. Just look how beautiful this place is. And what fascinates me and what makes me feel so proud is that they are Africans. And you know what? I don't want to talk too much today. If today is your first time seeing this face on your screen, my name is Mr. Ghana Baby, the village boy who is on a journey to change the narratives of Mama Africa. So if you are new to the channel, do me a favor, subscribe and be part of this awesome family. Let's hit 500,000 subscribers by the end of this month. Stay tuned. Let me talk to the owner of this building and stay cool and enjoy this amazing episode from your boy, Mr. Maya. Make Africa home again, Africa, Africa home again, baby. Make Africa home again, Africa, Africa home again, baby. Africa home again, Africa, Africa, Africa home again, baby. Africa home again, Africa, Africa, Africa home again, baby. See how we're natural. You know what? I can't believe I'm sitting down with Ghana's top five real estate developers. The guys who are enjoying the money in the country. No, we're trying to. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of people don't know you, so you just have to tell us who you are. Okay. And where are you from? Oh, I'm, I'm from here. I'm from here. Where? Ignore the accent, but I'm here. <laughs> um, so, no, I was born in uh, Accra, and uh, I grew up in Latibia Koshi, and I sat him down. And then my mother had the opportunity to send me to school when I was nine years old. Um, we... The family business was a uh, Revlon. We had the Revlon contract in the late um, 80s. And uh, my mom and father were able to save and send me to um, the UK. So at the time, they weren't happy with the schooling system. I was actually based in Cape Coast at the time. Oh, okay. So, Ankafo. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I ended up straight from Ankafo um, to, to the UK. How old were you when you went to I was UK? nine. Nine? Yeah, and to, to make things more interesting, they sent me to boarding school. So it was a bit of a culture shock from, uh, you know, straight Ankerful to, um, to Bristol, which is even, not even London, it's outside, outside London. So yeah, it was, uh, I've had mixed experiences and, you know. And um, how long did you live in the UK? I did 19 years there, so almost 20. So I came back when I was uh, 28 years old. You came back to Ghana? I came back to Ghana when I was 28 years old, yeah. Years so, old. so I went to, I did schooling there, I did university there, I did my first few jobs there. Um, so the UK is second home. I mean, I'm, I'm both British and Ghanaian. Um, so using British passport or Ghanaian passport? You know, you ha when, when you've done your time, you have to try and get the passport. So that's, that's what I did. So. <laughs> yeah, but um, you left the UK. I left the UK. Why? So for different reasons. So Ghana to me was a place where I thought I'll come back to retire when I was 60. As a, as a, I know, it's very crazy. But <laughs> what happened was 2008 was the, we had the financial crisis. Um, one of the banks I worked for, I was an investment banker before, Lehman Brothers. So in 2008, Lehman Brothers went down. And very fortunate for me, I mean, as the ship was sinking, one of my clients picked me up and said, we have an opportunity in Africa and it'll be based out of Ghana. Um, it was an opportunity that I couldn't say no to. Um, and so it was my landing pad to Accra. So I came, um, I was working, uh, I got to know uh, the landscape a little bit better. And then whilst I was doing that, I was sort of moonlighting, um, looking for business opportunities. So that's what, that's you, my journey. You, you came all the way from UK to Ghana to work in Ghana. I came from the UK to work in Ghana. Pounds and I mean, you decided to take CDs? <laughs> <laughs> you could pay me in CDs <laughs> if you wish. No, but what happened was, I mean, very fortunate for me, um, that I was, I was structured that I was, you know, they, they found me in the UK. Okay. So they, they employed me there. Um, and uh, it was a great opportunity. Um, I really enjoyed working, the people I worked with. So I helped set up uh, Biosat One, 
which was one of the channels in 2008. I mean, yeah, Sac One TV. Yeah, yeah, that was a really great, like, personally, it was a, like a great experience for me. Um, it was a good way to learn about Ghana and to meet people. Um, ultimately, that's what you need. Now um, you are into real estate. Yes, if very. I should, like, if I should tell people more about you, I would say that you're one of the top five in I'll, Ghana. I like to think so, but I mean, it's very competitive. There's some good people out there, but yes, I like to think you know, I'm, but, I'm but, there. But why, why real estate? Um, chance. Um, luck. So in 2008, actually, so I used to do a lot of presentations to help companies raise money. And I thought to myself, why don't I try and do a small presentation to my group of investment banking friends to see if they were willing to invest in a small project I'm doing in Ghana. So we, we had some family land in Shiashi. Yeah. Um, which is East Legon. And I wanted to try my luck out, like um, doing a sort of student host, ho hostel What's type that? project. So I did a presentation. I mean, some of the numbers I made up, but because I was doing it from there. Um, but they, they gave me 20000 each, and I managed to raise $100,000, which I ended up starting the project. So I was actually going to start student housing, but somehow... I don't know what it is, by chance, something made me change and I decided to go into um, residential houses. And the reason primarily was because I was earning pounds in London, but I still couldn't really get a place in East Ligon. So a lot of the houses in East Ligon was like $400,000. So I, I thought there's definitely a market for $150,000 to $200,000 know, apartments or houses for young professionals or not necessarily like working professionals who, who earn a decent amount of money. Um, there's definitely a mismatch between demand and supply in, um, in, in Ghana. So we were able to hit a price point. I did eight townhouses. Um, we sold each for $150,000. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's history. So. You know, like, you know, you mentioned $150,000. It's a lot of money. No, it's, a lot, it's a lot of money, but I, I guess like any business is where is you, you try to find a, a segment. So yeah. if house prices are 400000 average in East Legon at the time, and you come up with a product that's 150000 you, you automatically create a bit of demand. I'm not saying yeah. we're targeting everybody, but what, it's just... What I'm trying to say is that... It's like, still a lot of money. How can Africans afford to buy a house of $150,000? No, so, because I know there are so many people no, out there. No, so, so it's not... It's not I'm saying Africans. There's, there's Ghanaians out there who have CD savings and the way that historically the CD is always depreciated. So a good way to convert your money is to buy real estate or land because land preserves um, inflation. It's, it's a good hedge against inflation and currency depreciation. So people buy houses and they buy land to store the, the value of their CD. You, you so, see, so, what I'm, yeah, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's, it's expensive, I get it, yeah. but it's a savings option for a lot of people. It's, it's not expensive. It is expensive. One fifty thousand dollars is not expensive. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to say something because how do Ghanaians? So, yeah. yeah, I have so many people right. who are out there watching us. So I've never been to Africa. Mm. Who were thinking that even coming to Africa, I mean, one fifty thousand dollars houses don't exist. People in Africa can't afford to purchase that's a, a house. Like no, that. that's the perception exactly. outside is, you know, because you look at the you go to CIA website, it's, it's, it'll tell you average income in Ghana is two thousand um, dollars a year. So most people are like, how's that possible? Whereas in the, in the U.S. it's thirty, forty thousand dollars a year. So obviously, and I think it's just down to the fact that it's there's there's, uh, there's a there's a there's a small segment at the top, you know, um, and the population is large. So obviously, the figure is spread across a bigger segment of the population. But there there's a segment of the urban population who have decent wealth and decent cash flow. It's both from proper businesses. Um, and they want to invest in real estate. Um, real estate, people understand. People don't always understand the stock market. So you have to, you know, see. You have to, you know, give context to where where we're coming from. My brother, mm -hmm. for me, I think you are very successful right now. Thank I you. really want to grow up to be. <laughs> 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 but you know, like you lived in the UK, came back to establish mm -hmm. this business in mm -hmm. here. I just want you to, to advise your fellow brothers and sisters out there. But first of all, mm -hmm. I just want to ask you: yes. Is it worth it? to invest your money in real estate? For sure. But I keep saying, you have to buy the right thing. Um, but, you know, the, the, the reality is that it's, you're seeing something that I'm very proud of. I'm very proud of this building. Um, because, like I said, it's, it's, you, you could be anywhere in the world. Yeah. 
Um, Ghana is, is changing. I mean, in the 10 years, you know, 10 to 12 years that I've been here, it's, it's changed and it's constantly changing. Um, there's, there's, there's a rising segment of population who you know, are, are exposed, they have money, and they do want to buy real estate. So it's really demand and supply. If there's more capital chasing land um, population growth, then real estate prices will go up. So from Ghana's perspective, yes, we're starting from such a low base that real estate long term makes sense. Just like, just like any investment product, you know. Um, I think it's, it's a good place to be long term. If you've got a long term investment view, Ghana is a good bet. I just wanted to know yeah. um, during this transition, what were the major challenges that you faced when you were here? No, I mean, it's, um, it's a combination of, you know, it's, uh, I joined a company that was predominantly Ghanaian. Um, there's a few expats um, in management, but you know, there's a small group of people that always question, you know, are you, are you an expat, are you Ghanaian, they don't accept you, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, you have a funny accent and are you really one of us? So that's, you, you know, you always have a group and they question your, your expertise and, and, you know, it's just very weird, it's a weird dynamic. However, there's a group of people who also welcome you back, it's like, let's work together and that's, always, that's also, you know, it's just, it is like any organization. Um, you know, I think those who also do come back, I, uh, I've met a few people who I, you know, I think it's sometimes also good to have a bit of humility because you're coming back and somehow, you, you know, you, you think you have your slightly more advantageous work experience and, and education than others. Um, but the work environment is very different. So I, I think, you know, I encourage people to have the humility to learn what's on the ground. And because uh, you, you're bringing two best practice together um, in a company. So it's, there's a lot that the diaspora can also learn about um, what goes on the ground. Um, you know, I've, I've been blessed to work in media, investment banking and real estate. And uh, there's definitely a lot you can learn from media here, real estate here. Um, and, and, you know, we it's sharing of ideas. That's what makes this whole thing work. So I, I encourage people to have the humility when they come back um, and not think that they know they have superior knowledge or, or experience than, than the guys on the ground. Basically, you're trying to say that you should learn to work with the people on the ground. Learn to be humble and learn to just listen and learn. And don't just come and, you know, shoot from the hip and... Mr. Hansen. Yeah. Like, I just want to know how many apartments have you built in Ghana so far? Um, probably around 300 in the last um, 10 years, I'll say. Yeah, but obviously we were building up. So it was eight units, 28 units, uh, 45 units, 30 units, um, 62 units. Um, this obviously is 103 units. So obviously we're getting bigger over time. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, the market is growing. But at the same time, you know, we are in a corona environment. This year is going to be a bit tricky. So maybe we'll scale back next year or find ways to diversify. But um, it's, it's an interesting market, but it's, uh, it has the challenges, but the opportunity is definitely there. So just advise your fellow brothers and sisters to How? come back home. <laughs> what are you going to tell them? Okay. You know this advice, I, I would say <laughs> come home, but come on your own terms. I think a lot of people say come home, come home, and you, they're not prepared. Um, and what you're seeing, you know, it's, it's, you're seeing the end result, but yeah. you don't know the wahala behind it. No, you can tell us the wahala behind There's wahala behind it. No, I, oh. I'm very, like, what I'm doing, I, I probably couldn't do anywhere else. All right, I'm very honored to be Ghanaian, the fact that I've had the opportunity to do this kind of, these, these kind of projects. Um, but I, you know, I always get asked, you know, should I come back? The simple answer is yes, but on your own terms. You know, meaning, you know, are you coming back having a plan? Is there, is there a job at home? Is there a roof of your head? You know, what's the plan? Don't just come home and hope that the job market is the same as in, in UK. The UK, you go online, there's jobs there, there's recruitment consultants, people will help you. Here, it's, 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 it feels like luck because you're dealing with your network. You have to ask an uncle and, and you don't you want to take the element of luck outside of moving back. So that's my advice. As Ghana's a great place if you have a few basic needs covered. So, uh, last question before I let you go. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about like creating of jobs in Africa because some some people want to come back home, yep. but they're coming back home to look for a job. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It's I tough. just want you to tell me because you know, like no, it, it, it's, it's tough. Um, it, it's like I said, the labor market is not like what you're used to outside. 
you know, yes, we have the internet, but some, some companies, the websites are, they don't always update it. You know how it's like. So it just removed the element of luck from your job search process by, you know, um, definitely doing research from, from outside, uh, finding ways to come back. Um, take your time. Don't just land in Ghana, Kotaka, and just say, I'm home. It's, it's, you, it's a rude awakening, you know. But like I said, Ghana's a beautiful place. Um, it's just, it's home. So come back on your own terms. Otherwise, what, what will happen is that, yes, people come back, they're not, they're not settled, they haven't really thought it through, and then they go back. That's what we don't want. Um, so we want people to come back and add value. Um, so that's my, my advice. Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for talking to me. Okay. Thank you. Make Africa home again. Africa, Africa home again, baby. Make Africa home again. Africa, Africa home again, baby. Africa home again. Africa, Africa, Africa home again, baby. Africa home again. Africa, Africa, Africa home again, baby. See how we're natural. I love my natural. I got an afro. Became a black pearl.